Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I managed to get the system working. It only took me about uh, three days, I think. And I've got it working, transmitting correction data from this unit here to this unit here via LoRa. And these uh, managed to get it working using these four uh, LoRa modules in parallel. And just to go through the whole process, here's uh, U Center running the system without correction data going through and got about 0.45 metres accuracy indicated by the middle top screen uh, if we go over here, let's um, run the system there's loads of scripts to run up here to get this working yeah so um, I had to change all the frequencies from um, 433.0 to uh, 430, 431, 432 and 433 megahertz because otherwise the uh, data interfered with each other so for a long time I was thinking oh, why is this data looking so corrupted there's lots of like um, aberrations on it yeah so that wasn't good but yeah it's quite simple it was just getting collisions so data was uh, getting bleeded, bleeding onto other uh, modules Oop, right, we've got some terminals appearing here. It's all, all like uh, automated. So this is uh, Ross terminals like coming up. Let's just get rid of that. Here we go. Well, so that's the master um, nest and the master slaves working. It's sending data from the U blocks uh, F9P. And let's see if the other. So, the, yeah, the first line of terminals is the nest, and the second line of terminals is the dog. And yeah, we're getting data uh, transferred. Let's see what's happening over here. So, it's um, indicating we've got a float, we've got a DG NSS. I don't actually know what. We should, we should get a fix in a minute because the data is coming over. Uh, let's have a look at the blue lights here because um, this was quite interesting. The blue. LEDs are uh, kind of flickering slightly, but the fact that they remain on for a long time indicates that they are working uh, really hard. Uh, so the uh, fact, yeah, the fact that these blue lights aren't actually um, in the off position indicates that they are working at full capacity, which is what we want. We don't want any um, uh, time lag. They do switch off every five or so seconds like there and on the receive side the time intervals are quite different the receive takes a lot less time so the blue LEDs are flickering uh, much faster and there's a lot of um, off time which is quite interesting I didn't really know that it did that so let's have a look so oh we've got a fix already well that was quick fantastic so if I'm looking at the middle top box and it says fixed and you see that the um, GPS is like firmly stable now it's not wandering around the screen like it was before um, so the fix light is indicated by that single flashing blue LED in the middle and what else is of interest yeah that um, double LED light indicates that uh, data was transmitted through serials, so you can actually count the interval between those um, double flashes. I can see that on the screen. Maybe you can't. Double flash. Double flash. So it's about four seconds, I think, which is good. So, yeah, the system is a little bit fussy on the timing, so it doesn't like to have too much of a time interval between the um, serial uh, transmission, but yeah, it seems to be working nicely. Just to zoom in here, it is fixed, and the accuracy is showing 0 0.01 meters, which is like yeah, one centimeter, ten millimeters accuracy, which is what we want. Yay! So great. And there's our other system there. Um, another way. Or another thing that tells me that this thing is working without too many errors is looking at the data on the uh, 
think it's a slave dog. Um, I've actually programmed it to report any uh, data errors. So this here in red says total data errors equals zero. So like I said earlier, I think yeah, I had interference between um, the different frequencies. Um, basically, I was uh, using it all on one frequency, which is like really bad. So I was getting lots of collisions. Uh, so by spreading it by one megahertz, I got it all um, uh, spread out and uh, avoided all those collisions, which is really nice. It was quite interesting to to see that happen. But yeah, no, no red text. It's all clean. There we are. Look, there's a block of data there. Absolutely pristine. There's not a single error on this. Which is, that's what it should be looking at. Yeah, before I was getting like blocks of like weird. Uh, non-standard text like some Chinese characters and all kinds of other things which uh, made it really difficult. So there we go, nice clean data transmission and it's uh, yeah you could keep on expanding this system. If I wanted to get up to a spreading factor of 12 just um, add more um, low run modules so for every step in the spreading factor that would um, mean that data transmission was um, d d uh, twice as long in terms of time. So if I wanted to go up to a spreading factor of 10, I'd, I'd need 8 modules. If I wanted to go to 11, I'd need 16 modules. If I wanted to go to a spreading factor of 12, I'd need 32 LoRaWAN modules. But I'm not going to do that. I don't think I, I even need it. And actually, um, I'm, I'm hoping that I can use a, a RF amplifier as well. Uh, obviously, I don't want to do too much. And, I really don't want to go to the trouble of getting a uh, full like uh, radio operator's license either, if I can help it. But maybe that's what I should do. I don't know. It's like yeah, it could be fun in learning how to um, operate a ham radio and all the ins and outs of it, and get the certification and a license. I could transmit at like um, really high levels, but it's still quite likely to. Um, interfere with other people's data so you know, using lots of low RAR radios like this really helps me keep under the radar um, which is, 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 is quite nice in a way well there we go that's the end of this uh, transmission everybody like, uh, see you later